Hello, and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Catherine, and this is the place where I make my internal dialogue and external monologue. Today we're going to be talking about coming out before the internet. What it was like to come out before the internet. Technically, it's a part two video. And we're talking about what life was like being gay and everything from a Generation X perspective. So let's start with me. I was openly gay in my senior year of high school. This was 1991. I didn't think it was anything spectacular. It's a little bit odd because I'm pretty sure if I was not the first, I was one of the first. So I took a lot of crap from a lot of Christians that were at my school. You know, and I also took a woman to prom. And I'm pretty sure I was the first same-sex prom couple for my high school. So that, that was interesting. I ruined a bunch of born-again Christians' prom. And I'm all right. I'm still all right with that. I hope you've gotten over it, if you're watching this, but you're probably not. So that happened. And there was a lot of hate, and there was a lot of everything. But a lot of people came together. You know, a lot of people really did support me. Not the born-again Christians. But the other people, they really did support me. My friends at the time. And as I came out later, and like, I was relating this to people, they were like, oh, you're so brave, I could have never done that. But I just did it because I thought it was natural. And normal. But, like, intergenerationally, there's a lot of things that I consider normal that people of an older generation didn't or people of a younger generation don't. So, like, like take one of the most spectacular things is that in every generation really before Generation X, gays and lesbians didn't mingle. We didn't. It was just odd. And I never thought of that that way because I came out, I had a bunch of gay friends, I had a bunch of lesbian friends, and we mingled. But before my generation... It just really didn't happen. Oh, you know, I'm not saying that weren't, there weren't outliers or there weren't tokens. But still, if you go and you find an older gay person, they'll tell you that it didn't, it did not mingle pretty much. And so, but when I came out, it was normal. And when I came out, the gay community was all together. And for the first time ever, I mean, you can go back to Stonewall but Stonewall was symbolic, but the AIDS crisis is what brought everybody together as a community. When the AIDS mobilization, when the organization started, gays, lesbians, bi, trans, everybody came together. And that's when the community actually formed. So imagine that. Like, I know we're having problems with trans acceptance with queer acceptance, with non-binary acceptance. But really, it wasn't so long ago when gays and lesbians did not mix. So there's hope. There really is hope. Uh, you know, another thing with the AIDS crisis that was going on at the time that I was coming of age, my generation was coming of age, you know, this isn't just the gay community. I've talked to plenty of straight people that have this too. Is that we are the only generation that came out and came of age at a time when death and sex were equal. We equate death and sex in our minds. Imagine that. Like, that's just, just crazy to have death and sex. You know, the generation before ours didn't have it. They had sex and pleasure. Generation after, you know, there's treatment for HIV. It doesn't mean it's a death sentence anymore. Death and pleasure, they don't have to worry so much. Our generation, death and sex go together. Death and sex. Imagine that. Not death and pleasure. No, no, it doesn't go. That's, that's cured. You know, pleasure, sex, pleasure, sex. Got pleasure sex on one side, pleasure sex on the other side. Death and sex here. I'm like, you know, I want to review our order and be like, 
excuse me, ma'am, I was reviewing our order and I would much rather have, I, I distinctly remember ordering the pleasure and sex option, not the death and sex option. Yes. And another thing, transitioning with the phone, we didn't have the Tinder, all that type of app, her grinder, manhunt, that sort of thing. But we did have two things. We had party lines, which I never got to use a party line because I didn't pay my own phone bill. My father paid it at the time, and I didn't have my own phone number. And it was one of those things where, when they were popular, father's a very stingy man. And he went through that phone bill, and I was yelled at for going over, like, by a penny. Like, if there was something unaccounted for, it was me. I was yelled at. I'm, you know, why did you do this? Why did this happen? That was at a time where long-distance phone calls actually cost money. So, like, you would get yelled at by your parents for a long-distance phone call, even if it was just, like, across a town line. It could have had a division. Like, at one point, I lived in, a, in Huntington Beach. My girlfriend lived in Long Beach, which our city's right next to each other. And, but it was a long-distance phone call. And I got into a lot of trouble during that relationship because there was no intermet. There was no mail. There was no, we called each other on the phone and spoke for hours. And then you ran up your phone bill and your parents got very angry. So there was that. So I never got to use a party line. I wish I did. I mean, but I do strongly suspect that it was all like either men pretending to be women or couples looking for their third partner because that's how things were back then. Totally different today. So what else? Oh, and then there were classifieds on the back of, like, I loved the weekly newspapers. But if you had a fetish or whatever, you advertise in the back of their papers, you know, man seeking man, you know, hung, well hung, uncut, looking for a furry bottom. Must like salad. And then, you know, you've got the women for women. I enjoy folk music, long walks on the beach, um, kittens, rainbows, butterflies, and cuddles. So, yeah, that's, that's the, basically how classifieds used to look. A man's section, women's section. But my favorite section, and the one that I checked religiously, was the misconnection section. I, I was always hoping that somebody would be like, blonde woman, and I'd be like, I'm a blonde woman. Saw you at the supermarket on 16th and Castro. I was at the supermarket on 16th and Castro. I shopped there. You were wearing, it was Monday, the 26th of April. Was I there? I don't know, but I'll still keep reading. You were wearing... A black t-shirt. Like, I wear black t-shirts. You were looking at bananas. Like, I look at bananas. It could be me. They're like, so I was always hoping that that would happen to me. And it never did. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that was just religiously searching the misconnection section. Like, if you want to see what it was sort of like, you can go to Craigslist and go to the man seeking man, women seeking women misconnections. But there were no pictures, there were nothing like that. It was just text. You had to discern whether or not it was you from that. So and that is all for the day. If you have any memories, please leave them in the comments. And I will touch on them in another video. And if you've liked this, please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it a lot because it would help boost me quite a bit. All right. Thank you. Bye.